Bel- Belichick's lost a, he's lost a step to I'm me. I'm not going to do I, this. I'm not going to do this. This is Annex Squared. What is up? It is Annex Squared, episode 15. It is Tuesday, November 13th, 2022. My name is Jason Annex. Joined by my identical twin brother, the UFC broadcaster, John Anik. You know, it's interesting for you not to be in like the host seat. And we'll get into Las Vegas. I know. Welcome back. I know you had a long week, but interesting for you to be in the two seats. Like, you don't know what to do with yourself sitting over there. Maybe we should let you drive the bus one week, huh? It's kind of nice not being in that driver's seat. I'm not talking about pigeons driving buses. But yeah, I mean, it's very rare that I get to be in the analyst seat. And certainly yeah. I don't sit professing to be some sort of great NFL analyst, right? But I get <laughs> to be a UFC analyst after the pay-per-views now. I sit on the end of the desk and I'm sort of in a little bit of a hybrid role, which is kind of nice. But I have a new computer, courtesy of the UFC, on which I record all of my audio. And hopefully the camera looks better. Seems as though our <laughs> producer, Zach Phillips, believes that uh, I look a, a little bit cleaner this week. And it's not because I'm overslept. So... Stayed up late watching the New England Patriots last night. That Arizona outfit, you know, first play for me next week. Broncos laying whatever against that Arizona <laughs> outfit. Not reactionary or otherwise. How do you bet that Arizona team right now? I mean, my goodness. I don't know if they've given up or not. I Troy mean, Aikman at one point on the broadcast was like, yeah, it's kind of tough. We four and eight, you know, sort of playing out the string, so to speak, coming to work every day. Man, I mean, they look like they've given up. Like they don't want to injure their shoulder going for a tackle on the goal line. I mean, what are we doing? Well, I like that you jumped right into that game, and we'll certainly get into that game because, unfortunately, uh, there were certain spots in which we had the Cardinals. But anyway, welcome back, Vegas. So I was able to join you, UFC 282, last pay-per-view of the year. I was able to join you for the last 48 hours. Nothing like being right there. Got to be happy for you to be home and focus on the holidays a little bit. I know there's never really too much downtime, but... I, I expect the National Football League will get a little more of your focus over the next couple weeks than it well, has. Well, I should be better. I should be better. But yeah, always good to get that last pay-per-view in the can because this is the only thing that would amount to an off-season for the UFC. We get a couple weeks here and a couple weeks at the beginning of January to sort of reset to whatever degree. Quick story. So I brought home these gummy bears for my daughter, right? They were in like a champagne bottle, part of the mini bar at Resorts World. By the way, what a great hotel. Oh, five Conrad. star pillows, five star blankets, five star towels. I'd imagine the robe was five stars. Bilal Muhammad's girlfriend suggests that the robe is five stars, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I bring home these gummy bears, and my daughter happened to be going on some trip with her sixth grade class. So it's like, oh, I'll bring the gummy bears. Great. She goes up to pack the gummy bears, and my wife comes down and she's like, Jonathan, these are champagne gummy bears. No way. And I'm like, this I- is how people go to prison. You give the children champagne gummy bears and they take them on the bus, give them to their friend, and then they're hammered on the bus. Unbelievable. Right? And I'm in jail. You know, UFC play-by-play announcer is a convicted felon for, you know, giving alcohol to a minor willingly. Right? But here's the rub. They're non-alcoholic gummy bears, of course. Right? But so (laughs) for about 90 seconds, I'm freaking out. Because my wife suggests that I've given my daughter alcohol, like alcohol edibles at whatever, at 11 (laughs) years old, right? Which was not the case, right? So they bring them down to me and I'm freaking out. And then I see non-alcoholic on the bottle, right? So several hours evaporate and my daughter sort of said, oh, well, daddy, give me these interesting gummy bears. And it's like, no, no. Daddy gave you champagne flavored, (laughs) non-alcoholic gummy bears. Daddy didn't do anything, right? But mommy- sort of created this narrative and now it's like daddy's giving you interesting things right so you right. can be sure that she goes on the bus and says oh so my daddy gave me these gummy bears <laughs> and it's like no man no right. i mean they're just champagne flavored gummy bears that my nine-year-old ha- has no problem ingesting so uh, be it. careful folks be careful out there love it anyone who hasn't seen annex squared before each week we pick five games in the National Football League against the spread and against each other. Our ultimate goal is to get our picks ready for the Circa Pro Football Contest. We'll get into that in a little bit, but each week for the Pro Football Contest, we submit five picks against the spread together. Joint entry. Uh, So we'll get into our picks from last week. So going into last week, you had a three-game lead. I went four and one last week. You went one and four. The three-game lead is erased. We are tied. Nothing to write home about, but I'm happy to be there. I'll go through my four and one quickly. Uh, 
you talked about the game last night, the Cardinals Patriots. We will get into that game because I do want to get into a couple things. You know, you're harping all about that game. I want to chime in on that. But my four and one, the one game I lost, Steelers minus two and a half versus the Ravens. You know, quarterback gets injured. It is what it is. Kenny Pickett. Um, uh, I don't know if they would have won that game either way. Um, close game. Didn't score enough points. It is what it is. The four hits. Jets plus nine and a half at the Bills. That was a little bit lucky. They had a late field goal to cut it to eight. Uh, the Lions minus two and a half versus the Vikings. We'll take it all day. The surging Detroit Lions. 49ers minus three and a half versus the Buccaneers. That was out. And finally, Chargers plus three and a half versus the night game. Sunday night, they win the football game outright. So that's the four and one. We're even now. Talk about the one and four, bro. Well, I just want to focus on the two games that we went head to head and you beat me on both of these. So the Bills, probably too many points to be laying within the division. And I think sometimes I talk out of both sides of my mouth on that, right? Like in the NFC for sure. And maybe there's no high octane offense in some of those equations, but I'm always talking about, oh, give me all those points within division. Even this weekend, I'm a little bit tantalized by the New York Giants, as bad an outfit as that is, getting points against the Washington Commanders because it's in division and they just tied. But even if you want to suggest that the Bills should have gotten home, they didn't. And it's a lot of points within division. And the Bills did not go run and hide. And hopefully yep. that's a yep. kid in the bathtub and not somebody coming in here trying to take everything I've worked for. And then the <laughs> Buccaneers just find a better game on the board than fading the best defense in football. So I can't get out of my own way right now. Very much excited to spin it forward. I'm locked out of the account in which I gamble in. I don't even owe my guy that much money. Things aren't going very well. I'm spiraling out of control right now. All right. So the one game you did hit, I will say Bengals minus six versus the Browns. Oh yeah. Look, yeah. <clears throat> Gotta love that. Looking to play that. That was a play for me Sunday morning. So either way, we're tied heading into week 15. Let's get into the circa million four pro football contest picks real quick. <clears throat> you know, you waved the white flag in a text message to me. So a one and four for us last week, uh, Steelers minus two and a half, you know, pick it out, whatever close game. I did lay off this in the book. We did hit the Bengals minus five and a half. That was the only game I played. You know, if I'm Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen, like I want none of this Cincinnati outfit coming to town or going there. I'm telling you, I, I, I couldn't be higher on the Bengals right now. Um, and then these last or the, these two Titans minus three and a half and Seahawks minus three and a half. You know, there was a reason why the Titans number wasn't bigger. They're just, you know, you're a three and a half point favorite at home. If you're a really good team, that should be that should be higher. Um and the Seahawks minus three and a half hosting Carolina, both their top two running backs out. That's just, you know, these teams at minus three and a half at home. There's a reason why they're minus three and a half at home. And then the bucks plus three and a half, you know, I was on San Francisco. That's you dog. You know, I wanted the Eagles minus six to be our last election. So that's on you, but that's our one and four. We're now 35, 32 and three oh. white, flag, white flag is, is raised three games over 500. Um, another year, not getting paid in that, in that pro football contest. Am I wrong? Well, so now the focus shifts on making it, I think, five straight years in which we're over 500, which is not the goal going in. But uh, let's just try to finish strong. Try to put a couple of five and O's back to back, and then you just never know. But So I don't know if you have anything from week 14 in the NFL before we get into week 15, but I have to just shout out a couple unfortunate rest in peace. Grant Wall, the renowned Sports Illustrated reporter covering the World Cup passed away. I won't get into details of all these stories. And then Mike Leach, head coach in Mississippi state um, who anyone, whether you're a college football fan or not, just, I think you've come across his personality in this viral world in which we live and just keep seem like a couple special men in the sports world. And um, I don't know, man, those both hit me pretty good. Oh man. It does seem like as you get older, uh, it just seems like every other day, you're mourning the passing of somebody that has had a prof profound impact on you or a host full of others. So yeah, sad couple of days, no doubt about it. Yep. So anything from you in week 14 before we move forward to week 15? In the no, I mean, I would candidly, you know, UFC pay-per-view uh, grabbed a lot of my attention and uh, then came off the red eye. So I, I, I'm prepared for today's show, but I haven't watched a ton of NFL football. I did watch the entire Monday night football game. Little Gatorade carried me through. And hey, uh, I heard John Gruden. I heard John Gruden was in the building. I didn't see him. Um, was John Gruden in the building for UFC 282? Former I Las saw Vegas him Raiders take head a coach? picture with Dominic Cruz, but I didn't but, see him. Uh, yeah, if you know Patty Pimblett, who was uh, on the co main event, um, if you know him and John Gruden picture next to each other would have been nice with those blonde wigs. Anyway, let's move forward to the week 15 head to head selections. 
I'm going to lead it off this week after a four and one, one and four for you. We're tied, baby. And keep in mind, if I go with the team, you can't go on that same side. You got to go opposite side or pick another game. All right. My first selection is on Thursday night. We're continuing to roll with the San Francisco 49ers minus three and a half at the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle hasn't been good defensively. Carolina ran all over them, 223 yards. Seattle only ran for 46. I don't think Kenneth Walker's coming back. You know, he couldn't play Sundays. He really playing Thursday, still banged up. Um, this guy Purdy looking solid. You know, you beat Tampa Bay 35-7, Tom Brady in town. I just don't think they give it back that quick. Uh, Seattle is kind of rounding into the form of who they thought we'd, we'd be. They would be, frankly, not that good a football team. I think San Francisco wins seven in a row. It's not that big a number. I think, you know, yeah. So Seattle, they go to the chiefs next week. So I think they lose both these. I think they are continue to fade away. My first pick San Francisco minus three and a half. I might circle back and take Seattle. If I were to fall on a side, it would be Seattle. I know the injury report doesn't look great, but I'm not just going to fall off after a week. I still believe in Geno Smith. You're still talking about a divisionally relevant game. Brock Purdy might not even play. Is Josh Johnson the uh, the next best thing? I mean, I believe there's a rib injury that Brock Purdy's dealing with. And uh, short week, generally speaking, home underdogs have fared well. So there's a chance that I will circle back to Seattle if I'm even allowed to do that. And you know what? I think I am. I think I'm actually allowed to do that, incidentally. So uh, <laughs> do it my while. first selection However, square is going to be the Minnesota Vikings laying four against the Indianapolis Colts. This is a Saturday game, and it's just a belief that the Minnesota offense is going to outlast the Indianapolis offense, even indoors. I know the Colts are coming off the bye week, but uh, I don't know, man. I just think there's a lot of noise surrounding the Colts, and I do think the Minnesota Vikings have a lot of film with which to work, probably smarting after what happened against the Detroit Lions. So I'm going to just lay the price and uh, – foundationally, I really like Minnesota on the money line. I'm not going to lay that price. So I'm going to kind of cover my nose and lay the four. The price was going to be richer for me earlier in the week, five or so. So I will take the Minnesota Vikings on Saturday against Jeff Saturday. Minnesota <laughs> minus four against. I like that. I like that side too. My second pick, the Falcons plus four and a half at the saints. The Desmond Ritter era begins third round pick out of Cincinnati. Um, he can run a little bit too. M Mariota benched. So the Falcons have lost four and five. And to me, similar to the Seahawks kind of rounding into who that we thought they would be. Um, Cordell Patterson's a difference maker for me. Um, I know they burned me at Washington a couple weeks back. They should have won the football game, um, but I don't think they're tanking here. You know, Dennis Allen's still going with Andy Dalton, I believe, unless, unless there's something I don't know about. Um, I don't know how up for this game the Saints are. I think the Falcons will get up for this rookie making his debut. Give me the Falcons plus four and a half at the Saints, my second pick. All right, next play for me, Saturday. I believe it's a Saturday game. The Baltimore Ravens plus three at Cleveland. First home game for Deshaun Watson. Hasn't played particularly well on the road. I expect a big motivated effort from Cleveland, and I'm still not sure it's going to be enough. We don't know who's going to be under center for Baltimore to play on John Harbaugh, 11 and three in Cleveland, straight up hmm. against the Browns. Overall series numbers even better for the Ravens against the Browns. Getting three right now, it was two and a half. I like the number, I like the franchise, and Baltimore, generally speaking, finds a way to win these games. They're still relevant when it comes to the division, and uh, we'll see what happens as far as the injury report is concerned. But sitting here early in the week, as I am expected to do on a Tuesday on Annex Squared, Ravens plus three. And I think it'll probably end up on my card this weekend, however, square. Yeah, I think I probably go the other way there. I think Deshaun Watson finally plays a good football game. My third selection, and I still can't believe I'm doing it. Uh, and I saw this as a pick em, so I'm going to leave it there. The Lions at the Jets. I'm going with the Detroit Lions at the Jets. That has to give a little smirk. Plus one. Got... Plus one. All right, I'll take the point. Um, so Mike White's probably going to play. Any chance you saw the blast to his midsection, uh, the highlight of that? Did I that did come not. Across? Bro, like I can't believe he doesn't have shattered ribs. I can't believe he's, he's, he's playing. Um, but meanwhile, the juggernaut that's the Detroit Lions who are six and seven, you know, like, let's get to 500, men. You know, the fight in Dan Campbell's. I mean, I always think, who do I want money on Sunday morning? And, like, I definitely think they go in there and have a great chance to win the football game. Um, so Jared Goff this year, 22 touchdowns, seven picks, 
good stuff, right? Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers and Brady had ridiculous stretches in their career where they just really didn't turn the ball over a lot, didn't throw a lot of picks. Jared Goff's last interception, November 6th versus Green Bay. That matters. Um, you know, and nothing would make me happier than seeing the Lions go in there, beat the Jets for the Patriots' sake. And as much as I don't believe in the Patriots, I'd still love them to get in the postseason, postseason even if it means getting blown out by the Chiefs. My third selection, the Detroit Lions at the Jets plus one. So I'm so conflicted on a lot of these. Dolphins plus seven and a half Saturday in primetime at Buffalo is very tempting. But then I see the Chicago Bears catching nine points at home against Philadelphia. And do I want to take the home dog there or do I want to take Miami with some of the unknown intangibles in Buffalo? Right, I know I want one of those two big underdogs. I don't necessarily want both of them. Third straight road game for Miami. Stayed on the West Coast. Lost both games. Pretty big ask, right, to come back to the Florida sun that you see hitting my fat mug right now <laughs> and then to have to go to Buffalo. But I'm going to take the Dolphins. And I think that Tyree Kill, even though Buffalo's sole goal is going to be to shut him down, is still going to be heard from. You're through a key number, at least right now, as I see this. So Dolphins plus seven and a half at Buffalo, which means I got a lot of action coming up here on an NFL Saturday. Yikes. My fourth selection, the Cincinnati Bengals minus three and a half at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So Tampa Bay is the worst team in the NFL against the spread at three, nine and one juxtaposed to the Cincinnati outfit. Uh, the best at 10 and three. I've been drinking the Bengals Kool-Aid since week three when they're two and oh and two and they're going into the Jets and Burrow, who's just such a smooth cat, is just like, we'll be all right. And like, I huh. believe every word of it. And I alluded to that on this podcast. Just two teams going in very different directions. You know, that that three and a half point spread, which burned us last week twice. We bet on home teams three and a half, right? If you're a road team at three and a half, that means you're favored, whether it's seven, eight, nine at home. How many points would the Bengals be favored by at home this week against the Buccaneers who just got smoked against San Francisco? You see Brady and Mike Evans jarring a little bit on the sidelines. It's just not going well there. Brady shaking a lot of hands in San Francisco. We talked about that for two consecutive weeks on this show about him, you know, going to San Francisco next year. But I'm just going with a three and a half road dog here. I just think Brady's still getting too much respect in Vegas. I I might like Cincinnati to come out of the AFC. I can't get enough of this team. Give me Cincinnati minus three and a half, my fourth pick. All right. As we get to our next selection, number four out of five, I will go with the New England Patriots minus one at the Las Vegas Raiders. Probably the only time I've been on the Pats all year, maybe once prior. I like Bill Belichick to uh, stick it to Joshua McDaniels a little bit here at Allegiant Stadium, <laughs> just off the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, Patriots are already there. Got to think Belichick told them to enjoy Sin City a little bit. Crowd up those cannabis dispensary lines, fellas, and then put it on the Vegas Raiders. Man, the Patriots defensive line looked pretty good. I mean, say what you want about Arizona, an outfit that we're going to look to fade here shortly. But I don't know. Those Patriots are after it, getting after it chasing pro bowls, if not super bowls, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't know. I just, I like the special teams. The backup punter finally is starting to come around. I do think the Patriots <laughs> left some points on the board last week. And I think they'll be able to shut down either Josh Jacobs or Devonte Adams. I don't know exactly who they're going to prioritize, but I think new England is just a better team. They really are. And hopefully that factored into people's handicap last week when you were doing new England at Arizona I think the Patriots get two on the West Coast trip, and uh, I will lay the one. I mean, they're all still really playing hard, trying hard. I, I know you can say the same about Vegas. Vegas getting a few extra days, but their season evaporated with that sh that loss to the Raiders seven uh, to the Rams seventeen sixteen. So, uh, give me New England minus one at Vegas. Yeah, I, I, you might have sold me on that side. I wasn't playing, and I had that Raiders minus one. So you're saying it's Patriots minus one now. Oh, um, I'll check no, it no, out. No, no. We want the no, I, wasn't, I, 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 I wasn't, get the best number here, folks. I wasn't playing the Raiders. Don't get it twisted. But if New I New England had minus to, one. If I had to pick one side of that game, I'd be I'd be going on McDaniels. McDaniels wants to beat Belichick too. And I just I think he's got the offensive. The Patriots don't even throw the ball down the they don't throw the ball down the field. 
where the Arizona defensive coordinator alluded to it this week prior to the game. And they still didn't throw it on the field. You know, you don't get that special. You don't get that defensive touchdown. The Patriots, you know, they're for, you know Hunter Henry, Hunter Henry caught a 39 yarder down the seam, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was one. Anyway, my fifth pick, huh. I saw this at two and a half. I don't want to call them Los Angeles. So I'm going to call them the San Diego chargers minus two and a half versus the Tennessee Titans at home. I like this small number. For the home team, both teams seven and six. Titans obviously a different path to the postseason, win their division. They got a two game lead on Jacksonville right now. Jacksonville has Dallas coming to town. Um, Titans have lost three in a row. I think Joey Bosa might be coming back from the IR, hasn't played since week three, groin surgery. He's supposed to practice tomorrow. If Joey Bosa plays, give I like the Chargers even more now. Um, I just think the Chargers go to eight and six here. And a little bit, it's been a tough year for the Chargers, but they've sort of steadied the ship a little bit. Um, for me, the Titans, even if they lose this game, they still have a very clear path to win their division. I just think there's more at stake for the Chargers. I think they're a better team. I hate to fade Mike Vrabel. I think he'll have his guys motivated. I think the Chargers are the better team. My final pick, Chargers minus two and a half versus the Titans. So sometimes it's hard, given the week-to-week nature of the NFL, to handicap a team like the Jacksonville Jaguars. They will perpetually let me down, and then they go into Tennessee, and they beat the Titans in two and a half quarters, and the game's over. So I want to play Jacksonville plus four and a half or plus five as I sit here, home to the Dallas Cowboys. I like them as a home underdog. I can almost assure you, come Sunday, I'm going to have a ticket on Jacksonville. But as I sit here trying to beat your ass head to head and try to avoid the fate of doing five shots in 30 minutes, not because I can't do that, but just because I'd like to avoid that fate, I don't want to fade the Dallas Cowboys because their explosivity just really scares me. I think they have a chance to score on most possessions. I don't believe that about the Arizona Cardinals, so I'm going to play the Denver Broncos minus two and a half home to Arizona. Brandon McManus is going to factor prominently in this game. Saw your boy Matty Prater miss a kick the other night, which is a little bit uncharacteristic for him. Hasn't had a lot of field goal attempts this year. I just like Denver on the home turf. I like the offensive response last week against Kansas City. I do think that Russell Wilson and Jerry Judy with the connection may be feeling good about themselves a little bit. But really just a straight Arizona fade here. The number is key under a field goal. I just think Arizona has effectively given up. And even if Buda Baker hasn't, it seems like a lot of them around him have. And I know Colt McCoy gets rid of the ball quickly. And I know they have playmakers, DeAndre Hopkins, obviously. But uh, I don't know. I like Denver's ability to control clock and control game. And uh, given the short price, given the short week for Arizona, Broncos minus two and a half to round out my five for week 15 already, huh? 15? You see Russell Wilson's concussion? Oh, no. Who's the backup? I, I couldn't even tell you the backup. Let's go Denver, though. <laughs> so it's Brett Rippon. I think it was oh, really yeah. it's Mark Rippon. Threw an absolute bullet. So uh, but so so you didn't see uh, Russell Wilson's concussion, right? Certainly not. I saw I saw Chris Dawkins' concussion at UFC 282. <laughs> That's funny. So so Russell Wilson, uh, and he had a little egg, a little little uh, hematoma, if you will, in his head. But um, no, it's that actually will help his public approval rating. Well, but anyway, yeah, that's not nice. But anyway, the, the I find it's the helmets hitting the ground, bro. These concussions, like when you had both your concussions, both of them was your head hitting the ground, man. Those are, I understand you get blasted. These head to heads you have to avoid and that can beat it up too. But these concussions, man, I feel like I see when those heads hit the ground, it's almost like the concussions happen so often, you know? Um, yeah, it's a violent game. It really is crazy. It really is crazy. The speed anyway. at which these guys get going. Yeah, we don't need to talk about that though. No, and I know I did rest in peace in the concussion, but yeah, you're picking, talking about Russell Wilson. I wanted to make sure you knew that it was going to be the backup. Anyway, yeah, week 15 coming, cannonball coming in the NFL. We I might like the Broncos even more now. Dude, no, I get it. I'm with like, you. Kid like, looks good. I might go play it, good. like not now, but right now because yeah, of playing, the kid. You know. I get it. Playing for each other. and um, But Russell Wilson, it was when he got concussed, it was a tremendous... Tremendous but when I run. say it helps his public approval rating, I'm not taking a shot, but I just think, oh, look at a guy, you know, he's got a hematoma on his head. You tough it out for the boys, you know. I don't know. A, maybe he doesn't. And maybe I shouldn't say public. I should say private approval rating. The approval rating amongst his teammates, which seemingly gets called into question all the time. Well put. We appreciate everyone joining us on Annex Squared 15 in the books. We'll be back next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, week 16. For Zach Phillips producing this, my brother, John Anik, my name is Jason Anik. We'll see you next week. Yo.